Some years ago, a young man left Indiana, taking with him his harmonica and his sense of humor. Both stood him in good stead because he became one of the most popular of television stars. Of course, I'm talking about that lovable man, Herb Schreiner. <laughs> I thought I'd come out. Uh, everybody seems to be having a good time here on the show. I'm, I'm tickled to be here on this Chrysler show. Uh, I always wanted to come to Canada, too. You know, I heard so much about it. I, uh, there's a fellow from home that uh, I used to know. I went to school with him. His name is uh, Hooper Sikafoos. And uh, he, uh, he come up here one time. I, he always told us about it. He came up to go over Niagara Falls in a barrel. And he darn near drowned. Uh, they forgot to take the beer out of the barrel. I don't know what the matter is. Uh, very poor planning, I guess, but uh, he was a terrific guy. I, I never forget him because uh, he always talked about his trip up here, and also he is a very smart fellow anyways. He was a boy that, uh, well, in school he was smart even. You know, uh, we used to have a test in school where you had to take and put these uh, square pegs in the round holes. He could do it. <laughs> He's a strong kid, I guess. I don't know. He's one of those, uh, but he's working at home there now. He works down in Indiana there, and uh, he's got a nice job now. He works at the, uh, well, he's a house detective at the drive-in movie. And uh, it's an easy job. All he does at, at uh, midnight when, uh, when they uh, want to close up, he goes around with a stick and bangs on the cars so everybody knows the show's over. <laughs> and, uh, He's a, uh, he's a very smart fellow. In fact, he had one idea, which I think was, was terrific. Uh, he gave the idea to our doctor at home, and uh, the idea was the doctor would uh, give out these green stamps with uh, his operations, and it went over terrific. In fact, uh, he had, uh, well, he had, uh, all the ladies loved the idea. Of course, the men didn't care much for it because, uh, well, in fact, a lot of ladies was having six and eight kids just so they could get a pressure cooker. <laughs> To, uh, how I happened to think of him tonight, I was watching the, the, all the beautiful girls on the show, and me and Hooper used to go with the two girls. We were crazy about these two sisters. Uh, they were called the Honeycut Sisters. They, was a, a, they actually didn't look like sisters. That's the funny part of it. They looked like brothers a little bit. I mean, it was kind of, uh, they were kind of tall girls, and, uh, well, we didn't, uh, they were a little skinny, and, of course, most of our girls wasn't too good looking. Uh, we, the climate was kind of poor, and, uh, uh, we had girls that was very thin. In fact, uh, we had a lot of girls there that I believe if it hadn't been for varicose veins, they wouldn't have no legs at all. It's just <laughs> kind of bird-legged, you know. In fact, I remember one girl that her own dog tried to bury her three times. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, Hooper and me, uh, we were stuck on these two girls, and uh, they, uh, my girl was named Hymeria. She is a very, uh, very kind of a, well, she's an outdoor girl, you know. Uh, her folks never let her inside too much. I don't know what <laughs> But uh, she was one of the good looking ones in town. And most of the girls wasn't too good looking. In fact, a lot of them had their faces kind of bunged up, pitching horseshoes and stuff, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, this girl, she had, uh, well, I'll give you an idea how most of our girls looked. We had a beauty contest last summer there and uh, nobody won it. <laughs> Be surprised, uh, but we'd always try to cheer the girls up. Most of us boys was very good natured. We'd say something flattering, no matter what the girls looked like. We'd we'd uh, we'd see a girl coming up from the gravel pit, or we'd uh, uh, swimming or something. We'd always say something flattering, like uh, we'd say, "Well, uh, I see your skin cleared up." <laughs> something like that. I always liked this particular girl, and, and for one reason, that she loved shows. She liked a, a show like tonight. She loved to go to the movies, and uh, I think it was in her blood. I mean, she, uh, well, she was born at the drive-in movie, to tell you the truth. <laughs> the strange thing, too, how it happened. Her folks was, uh, the, the night she was born, her folks was rushing to the hospital, and they stopped off at the drive-in movie to ask directions, and they got interested in the picture. <laughs> well... 
But uh, she was uh, she was quite a girl. In fact, I always thought maybe I'd make a hit with her. And, and uh, first time I met her, I took her picture in a beauty contest. Uh, she had a bathing suit on, and I sent her picture to the uh, to the beauty contest in Atlantic City, and uh, they turned her down flat. I don't know what. Uh, in fact, uh, they wrote back and wanted to know how long she'd been in the water. <laughs> about her more than anything was that she tried to improve herself. She did everything in the world. She had her teeth braced up. Uh, she had been buck-toothed, and she had, uh, in fact, she used to be able to brush her teeth with her mouth shut. <laughs> but what she did, uh, and then, then she pierced her ears. There was another thing that made her look terrific. She had this, uh, she did it herself, too. Uh, she had one of these little conductor punches. Just, <laughs> Oh, and then I remember another thing she did. Uh, she got rid of them thick glasses, which was a good thing, too, because they, was, uh, they spoiled all the fun. You'd take her out on a date, and you'd go to, uh, you know, you'd, she'd lean her head back for you to kiss her. The sun would shine through her glasses and set fire to the leaves. <laughs> the fire department would come. Everybody would know where you was. It was no fun. But anyway, uh, one last little thing she did that the girls might be interested in, she had uh, a strapless evening gown, the first one in town. Uh, it had been in the general store window, and everybody thought it was ironing board cover. <laughs> well, she got it, and of course, being thin, the trouble was she had to wear it backwards and hold it up with her shoulder blades. 